Tips is in half an hour. Now though, music to our ears in Come West Along the Road. Hello, and welcome to Come West Along the Road. This week we have the second part of a television programme from 1966, Rebellion at Easter, which was made for the 50th anniversary of the Easter Rising of 1916 by the British commercial television company Rediffusion London. If you saw last week's programme, you'll know that the programme is basically a musical one, which consists of Irish national, political and rebel songs of the 1916 period intercut with dramatised scenes of the Rising from the GPO in Dublin and historical archival film footage. The actors and singers are Irish. Joe Lynch, Eileen Colgan, Jerry Fox, Billy Boyle, Dominic Behan and Maeve Mulvaney among them. But the production was English and was led by the scriptwriter and producer Elkin Allen, an innovator in the development of early commercial television. As I also said last week, the political attitudes seen here now seem raw and naive when viewed with the hindsight of 40 years of the Northern Troubles. But the programme is a useful reminder in documenting political attitudes of the past and the part that songs played in their formation. A week after the Rising, the English military began a series of courts martial which condemned the leaders to die. Day by day, in twos and threes, the rebels were taken out and shot. Even James Connolly, so badly wounded that he was strapped into a chair to face the firing squad. To tell the truth, most of the Dublin people had been hostile to the rebels, but now the cold-blooded executions shocked them into support. Now there was no shortage of volunteers for the Irish Republican Army. Songs were such an important part of the movement that you were imprisoned if you were caught singing them. This is one of the IRA recruiting songs. <laughs> I am a merry plough boy And I plough the fields be day Until the lightning flashed across my mind That I should run away I'm sick and tired of slavery Since the day that I was born So I'm off to join the IRA And I'm off tomorrow morn I'm off to Dublin in the green, in the green Where the helmets glitter in the sun Where the bayonets flash and the rifles crash To the echo of a Thompson gun I leave 
find me old grey coat I leave behind me plough I leave behind me horse and yoke No more I'll need them now I will take my short revolver And me bandolier of lead And live or die I can but try To avenge my country's dead So we're all off to Dublin in the green, in the green Where the helmets glitter in the sun Where the bayonets flash and the rifles crash To the echo of a Thompson gun No more through fields of wheat I'll roam At last has dawned the day To defend my country and my home In the ranks of the IRA my harvest shall be nothing less than a sheaf of black and tans And my scythe will be a bayonet on a rifle shining grand So we're all off to Dublin in the green, in the green Where the helmets glitter in the sun where the bayonets flash and the rifles crash To the echo of a Thompson gun The British countered this army with a new force of their own A collection of soldiers home from the Great War Unemployed and even some ex-convicts They were called the Black and Tans Said Lloyd George to Macpherson to uphold the law and order you a heaven to the neck I'll send over Greenwood a much stronger man And fill up the green isle with the gold black and tan The town of Balbriggan they burnt to the ground While bullets like hailstones were whizzing around And the women left homeless by his evil clan They wage war on the children the pale black and tan he sent them all over to pillage and loot To burn down the houses, the inmates to shoot To reconquer Ireland, said he is my plan With McCready and Co. and his bold black and tan From Dublin to Cork and from the Falls to Mayo Lies a trail of destruction wherever they go with England to help and a fierce passion to fan She must feel bloody proud of her bold black and tan Naturally, we didn't sing of our own methods Which were equally ruthless It was Michael Collins, the big fella Who organised the IRA to fight the black and tans One of his lieutenants was Sean Tracy Who was betrayed A film cameraman was there and a ballad maker was not long after. There was none to weep for you, Tracy lad, as you lay upon the ground. His comrade, Nushan, was one of his own as he warily looked around. Lift me gently, he whispered, no longer on earth can I stay. I will never more roam to my own native home, Tipperary so far away. Let the black and tans patrol our land with revolvers by either side. As near and far in their crossly cars they arrest our country's pride. Though they use their laws to crush the cause for which Tracy died today. We swear not in vain does his life's blood drain from Tipperary so far away. Some were shot, some put in prison. On the 13th of August 1920, Terence McSweeney, Lord Mayor of Cork, was arrested and taken to an English prison. That was to make sure there could be no Irish demonstrations outside. 
He went on a hunger strike and died of starvation 74 days later. His body was brought back to Ireland in a coffin draped with the forbidden flag. In a lonely Brixton prison where a dying rebel lay by his side a priest was standing ere his soul should pass away and he faintly murmured father as he clasped him by the hand tell me this before you leave me shall my soul pass through our land Shall my soul pass through old Ireland, pass through Cork's own city grand? Shall I see the old cathedral where St. Patrick took his stand? Shall I see that little chapel where I pledged my heart and hand? Tell me this before you leave me. Shall my soul pass through our land? Terence McSweeney's death aroused worldwide sympathy for the rebels. And this was intensified when, within a week, an 18-year-old student was hanged. So many people gathered outside Mountjoy prison that not all the might of the British Army could disperse them. The name of that young student was Kevin Barry. Joy jail one Monday morning High upon the gallows tree Kevin Barry gave his young life For the cause of liberty Just a lad of eighteen summers Yet there's no one can deny Shoot me like a soldier Do not hang me like a dog For I fought to free old Ireland On that bright September morn All around that little bakery Where we fought them hand to hand Why not shoot me like a soldier for I fought to free Ireland Another martyr for old Ireland Another murder for the crown Whose brutal laws may crush the Irish But can't keep their spirit down Lads like Barry are no cowards From the fall England's conscience was aroused at last, and her soldiers lost the will to fight. After all their suffering, in December 1921, five and a half years after the rising, the Irish rebels knew victory. Oh, some of them came from Dublin, some of them came from Clare, some of them came from Wicklow, from Wexford and Kildare. Some of them came across the sea from Boston and New York But the boys who bent the blackened hands were the boys from the county court There's a sacred spot in Dublin A place called Arbor Hill Where sleeps our noble martyrs But their message rings out still to you their message is calling as it did that Easter day when they 
shortly before he was executed, Patrick Pierce wrote a poem, The Mother. I do not grudge them, Lord. I do not grudge my two strong sons that I have seen go out to break their strength and die, they and a few, in bloody protest for a glorious thing. They shall be spoken of among their people. The generations shall remember them and call them blessed. But I will speak their names to my own heart in the long nights. The little names that were familiar once round my dead heart. Lord, thou art hard on mothers. We suffer in their coming and their going. And though I grudge them not, I weary, weary of the long sorrow. And yet, I have my joy. My sons were faithful, and they fought. They had fought, they had died, but they had won. On the 6th of December, 1921, Rebel leader Michael Collins and the British Prime Minister Lloyd George signed a treaty which gave most of the country independence. Only the predominantly Protestant Northern Ireland remained a part of the United Kingdom. But now the victors fought again, this time among themselves, over the treaty. Many wanted to go on with the battle. Even the great Michael Collins was killed in the fighting that followed. For some, the battle still rages, and violence has not entirely left our country. But most Irishmen, even if they still argue, are now at peace. Patrick Pierce and the others died to make old Ireland free. But their rebellion at Easter did more than that. They raised the flag of liberty for all those other nations who were not yet free. Song of peace and love, oh, oh whack for the diddle for the die do day. Of a land that rules all lands above, oh, oh whack for the diddle for the die do day. May peace and plenty be her share, who kept our home from want and care. Oh, God bless England is our prayer. Oh, whack for the diddle for the die do day. Oh, whack for the diddle for the die do day. So we say, hip hooray, come and listen while we pray. Whack for the diddle for the die do day. When we were savage, fierce and wild Whack for the diddle for the day She came like a mother to her only child oh, Whack for the diddle for the day Who took us from primeval slime Who kept our hands from wanton crime Who sent us to heaven in her own good time oh, Whack for the diddle for the day Whack for the diddle for the day So we say, hey, hooray, come and listen while we pray Whack for the diddle for the day Soft were naughty boys. Oh, whack for the diddle for the day, do day. Guns and pikes are dangerous ties. Oh, whack for the diddle for the day, do day. From the GPO to Boland's Mill, we made Mother England weep or fill, but old Mother England loves us still. Oh, whack for the diddle for the day, do day. Whack for the diddle for the day, do day. So we say, hooray, come and listen while we pray. Whack for the diddle for the day, do day. 
Whack for the diddle, for the dido day. All Irishmen forget the past. Yeah, yeah. Whack for the diddle, for the dido day. And think of the time that's coming for us. Yeah, whack for the diddle, for the dido day. Oh, when we'll all be civilized, neat and clean and well advised. Oh, won't Mother England be surprised? Yeah, whack for the diddle, for the dido day. Whack for the diddle, for the dido day. So we say. Rebellion at Easter, the 1916 Rising and the Songs of the Period, as seen by scriptwriter and producer Elkin Allen and Rediffusion London in 1966. Thanks again to the British Film Institute and Archbuild Limited in providing us with a copy of this unique programme. Once again, we'll finish this week with something determinately non-political. Tipperary whistle player Sean Ryan is a man who seems to defy time because unlike many of the performers who appear in this series, he doesn't seem to change at all with the passage of the years. Sean has been associated with Galway for a long time now, and perhaps as an earnest of that, he plays here on a pure drop programme of June 1990, a County Galway composition, Vincent Broderick's reel, and the reel, The Galway Rambler. And there's a packed musical lineup on the Late Late Show from 9.35 tonight. But next on RT1, we're off to Albert Square for EastEnders.